Welcome back to the second excerpt from Lord of the Rings. Um, this one is The Black Gate Opens. Uh, so here's the original. And so here's my mock-up of the same piece. So let's start unpacking that. Once again, I only use the pencil tool to do this. Um, no playing was uh, applied. Everything was drawn in. Automation, MIDI notes, everything. Everything is quantized as well. I just really want to dispel this myth that you have to do things a certain way that seems logical and creative, but I just want to show you that there's a different way of doing it. Um, and that a lot of these myths surrounding how you should program or not program or how things are done are not necessarily accurate. There's more than one way of doing things. Um, and if you're not a player, that's fine. So this markup of the three excerpts, I think, was um, the most complicated because it has the most articulations in it. So the first thing I did again was load the original audio file and then uh, figure out the actual tempo map because the tempo in the score is actually not quite accurate. It says 132, but it's actually 145 for the most part. So it's a lot faster than it says in the score. Then the first thing I did was program the strings again. There are some difficulties in the cello that we'll get to. But so the first thing I programmed was the marcados and the staccatos that it starts with. So I programmed them again, cinematic strings too, and then copy pasted it into other libraries. So that's what this is. All right, and that's almost all the shorts there are here because the rest is actually notated as legatos. So the first thing I did was again, Shelly and basses. So let's take a look at these. And once again, I programmed them into the first patch I have loaded and then copy pasted them.
And you'll see here it works towards this high point. And then I do take it back a little bit because we need to ramp back up all the way to the end. So if you go to Forte, you don't have a lot of room to go. So you got to kind of pull it back a little bit and then push ahead again. So that's why I did this right here. And you can see CC1 and CC11 are doing similar movements just to enhance the phrasing effect. Then next thing I would do, first actually something else I did was I layered tremolos into those legato lines that we have right there at the beginning. You can also layer in shorts like marcados, tenutos, but this is what I layered in. Tremolos sometimes really work to get that attack right. So I just layered that in, but you can layer other articulations in. Then viola and violence too, I actually thought were a bit complicated because they have a lot of very short notes that need to go into the short articulations, but they also have trills and then they also have sustains. So that was a bit of work to blend properly because obviously it needs to sound like one line, but it's divided. If you're set up like me, it's divided across a lot of tracks. Um, but you know, it works with a little bit of effort. So that's what this sounds like. And always make sure if you have really long notes that are tapering out, really do taper them out. Because uh, that's what naturally would happen. You know, if they bow it, they would, you know, the pressure on the end of the bow is lower. So they would just naturally let it fade out. Um, if it's a crescendo, they would normally do it the other way around and increase tension. I mean, you can also do it the other way around if you're a good player. Um, but this would be the natural thing to do for the string players to just, you know, let it fade slightly instead of holding it all the way, you know, at full volume, full velocity all the way to the end. They wouldn't do that. It's not the musical thing to do. Um, and now that I have that, I could just add violence one. Here we go. You can see there were short notes here that I actually put in a shorts patch because there's no way I would get this kind of attack from sustains. So I put these in here and then did some blending with these. Dear Lord. See, sounds like one line, even though it's that many tracks. Uh, something similar I did here. With these short notes. If I wanted to, I could also double these shorts um, in a shorts track. I don't think I did because 
this is good enough, I think. Yeah. If I wanted to bring it out a bit more, I would also layer shorts into those. But so this is the strings. And so same game as last time. Um, the bassoons are doubling uh, the uh, celli and the bass. So here are those. And I'm mixing Cinewinds, the Cinewinds bassoon shorts with the Berlin Woodwinds bassoon longs because I just like them that way. And you can see, again, the automation is very much the same, um, which doesn't mean I don't adjust it. I do, but very slightly. Like I will play through the copy paste and just see where does it work, where doesn't it work, where does it need adjusting. So now we have this in there. Let's listen together with the strings. Um, so you can see a line like this in Legato is very difficult to do with just one patch or one library. Um, I would always layer because you only get that kind of flowy quality from layering different products. Just make sure the negative track delay is accurate because otherwise it gets really messy. Um, but the legados and everything, it just starts to blend a little bit and then it sounds kind of realistic. So then the clarinets are doing the same thing as the uh, violas, which is also very common. It's also the same pain where they play trills and legados and since I use split patches, you know, <laughs> it's on different tracks. But here we go. and so forth. And let's listen together. See, you can hear the colors, but it's not overbearing. Then the oboe is weirdly playing just one note but okay. Seems like a waste of the oboe, but okay. That was what was in the score. And here are the flutes, all three from Berlin Woodwinds. go. And now all of them together.
So you can see once you've done the strings in this type of orchestration, which you'll find very often, um, you already have all the programming for the woodwinds done because they're playing the same lines. And for the most part, you can copy the automation and just adjust it. All right. Next thing I did was probably the horns again. So this is a lot of horn tracks. Let's listen just to the horns. This is again Cinebrass and Cinematic Studio Brass. <laughs> So the horns are really the centerpiece here um, for some of the piece. Uh, and you can see I did the same thing again where I put little breaks in the phrasing, you know, just to emphasize the phrase. Uh, and you can even see I did the little fades here on the sustains because that would be natural. It's those details that, you know, make the difference. And so what I did here as you can see the cinematic studio where I have solo horn and four horns again for the expressiveness. That's what they sound like. Then I used once again several patches from Cinebrass. So again, a bit warmer. And then what I did is I layered shorts into it, marcados, just to give it that, you know, slight marching quality. So this is the shorts from Cinebrass that I layered in. These are the shorts from Cinematic Studio Brass. go and so yeah all together it kind of works and again this would be how many horns 10 11 12 21 25, 26. This does not sound like 26 horns. This sounds like a large horn section. I would say like 8, 10, something like that. Maybe 12, but certainly not over 20. So again, layering stuff does not make it all of a sudden sound 20 times as big. All right, then um, for the most part, the trumpets are playing with the horns. So here are the trumpets. So 
So I wasn't quite as diligent here with the uh, phrasing and doing the automation. My bad, probably forgot that, but it's not that audible. So this is uh, cinematic studio brass trumpets, shorts and longs layered. And then this is Cinebras, shorts and longs layered. And so together, this is what it sounds like. And the last thing in the brass to do is the tuba bass trombone. I think it was just tuba and regular trombones in the score, but I like this patch, so who cares? Um, and then again, I would try and balance the sections within themselves. So, you know, just making sure the woodwinds sound like a section. I can hear all of those properly balanced. Then let's listen to these. can hear everything and then last thing to do is the percussion uh, so the only thing in here is timpani and snare drums I layer different snares because I always find snares very quickly sound very meaty so I like to layer different patches so this is the timpani from Cine Samples Cine Perk that and these are cineperk snares high and snares low there are two snare patches um, and the Hans Zimmer percussion buckets the snares from the buckets patch because I like that it cuts through a little bit better It's just very in the background of, you know, 
the piece. So here it is one more time. go that is the mock-up this one took me the longest i think probably three and a half hours maybe four hours i don't know i didn't time myself but and i was taking breaks too but yeah this is again roughly a minute of music you know if this took you between three and four hours this would be expected uh, this is the kind of quality that would be expected so yeah Go practice. <laughs>